am woman grand master nisha mohata and i'm here with my mother mm. and this is going to be the final video that i'm going to present to you after this all of you can start playing and enjoying the game of chess so let's get started so mom in the game of chess what did we learn what is the uh, you know what do we need to do in the game of chess checkmate king checkmate yes we need to checkmate the opponent's king right yeah. okay but it is not easy because the opponent's pieces are also going to defend the opponent's king right so for that just like you know it's like a battle in a like in a war uh, the king is very important if you defeat the king you win the battle but the soldiers always come in the way mm. so you have to eliminate the soldiers and only then you can get to the king right similarly in the game of chess you need to get rid of opponent soldiers and who are the soldiers here all his pawn pawns pieces yes, yes. every everything mm. right so either you have to win the pieces for free or you need to exchange them for your own pieces right yes so mom do you remember that we learned the point system in chess about the value of the pieces yes i know yes so the reason why we learned the point system is because in chess we need to go for exchanges right and that is when we need to make use of the point system so it is like this mom do you go to market sometimes any time <laughs> any time yes but not during corona time <laughs> but always she likes to go right yes and suppose you go with a 50 rupee note in your hand so you would want things worth rupees 50 minimum right maybe if you get something worth rupees 55 you'll be happier no i give it <laughs> no i mean if the shopkeeper says this is free with this will you like it you'll be happy right mm. something free something extra so what we want is we want to get either our money's worth or more than what our money can buy right mm. similarly in the game of chess when we are exchanging our pieces we want things equivalent to what we are giving or we want something more than what we are giving right yes. so for example let us have a look at uh, uh, an opening called the caro can so e4 c6 d4 d5 this is a caro can defense uh, not important to know the names i'm just mentioning it as we uh, are seeing it so here black has just played d5 and our e4 pawn is hanging right now next move black wants to take on e4 mm. so we have the option to capture this now mom is it a you know a good capture a bad capture or an okay capture what do you think is it normal move or is it a good move or is it a bad move equal equal yes so we take this pawn with our e pawn what will opponent do take it back yes, yes. opponent yes. can take it back with the pawn right yes so we lose our e pawn but we get opponent c pawn yes. right yes. so it's almost an equal trade we gave a pawn we got a pawn yes. right yes. so this is a normal trade it's fine to exchange this way right yes. now let us suppose white plays c3 black goes knight f6 white plays knight d2 and black plays bishop g4 now white has a choice of capturing this bishop can white take it mom no why because knight black knight is there yes black knight is supporting this bishop but my question to you is i am getting a piece i got a bishop my opponent also gets a piece but points but now queen has nine points and knight has only three points uh, you mean the bishop right the bishop yes. has three uh, points bishop. right so mom says that although it looks like it was a piece for a piece the queen has nine points whereas the bishop only has three points right so this trade of queen into bishop is a bad trade for white because white loses 9 points and gets only 3 right so very important is when you are exchanging something you need to see what you are losing and what you are gaining mm -hmm. right yes. so suppose in this position white decides okay i want to play for example say knight f3 and now black has a choice black can take 
this knight with the bishop yes. is it uh, possible or is it a very bad trade possible possible because knight has also take knight bishop a knight can also take bishop so you are saying that uh, white can take the bishop black can take the knight both have three points, three points. right a yeah. lot of people uh, prefer bishop uh, especially in open positions but we are not going to go into details in general it is a personal preference bishop or knight and both have three points so this trade is a normal trade right yes so uh, we need to understand that exchanges are very normal in the game of chess and it is not important what you took of your opponent it's also very important what you lost in the process <laughs>
So for rook, it is uh, what's the first alphabet? R. R. So when a rook moves, we we write R. So for example, let me just uh, show something. Uh, suppose this moves here. Mom, can you tell me how do we write this? Do C eight. What C eight? Rook R C eight. Very good. R C eight. Mm. Right. Mm. So similar. Now we know that K is for king. Q is for queen. Mm. For this bishop B. B for this n nice. n and for this a uh, rook yes and for the pawns it's only just the Three. square where it goes to mm. uh one more thing about notation when we castle we just write o o o dash o that yes. means castle yes. mm. and when we do long castle it is o dash o dash o that means Three. it's a long Three. long castle right so this is just about the notation it could be useful when you are following somebody else's games start position and now let's try to understand what is important in the game of chess and how it is played i mean you know the rules but i mean uh, some rule of thumb so now these squares e4 d4 d5 e5 these are the do you know mom, what these squares are called do you have any clue no these are the central squares like you know these are this is the center of the mm -hmm. chess board right if you look at it this is exactly the center right mm -hmm. and these squares are very very important in the game of chess so whenever you are playing you need to develop your pieces towards the center especially at the start of the game and actually in fact i would say throughout the game the center is a very important part of the chess board and the reason is that from the center the pieces can go to the king side or to the queen side king side is where the king belongs and queen side is where the queen belongs so from center the pieces can go anywhere this side or this side so if you keep the pieces in one side it cannot go to the other side very easily but if you keep your pieces in the center it can easily uh, you know go from left to right right to left from the center it's very easy to walk around from the center so the center is the most important part of the chessboard and your game should go around the center central squares okay now for example uh, when we are to make the first move we should try to avoid pushing the side pawns so f g h or a b c are the side pawns so which are the central pawns mom d and e yes the d2 d pawn, pawn and the e2 pawn, pawn right they are the central pawns for white and for black d8 d8 uh, which square is this e, e. no this is d d mm. or right mm. it should be d, d7 d7 and this e7. should e7 e7 so for black these two are the central pawns for white these two are the central pawns so when starting your game you should try to push your, one of your central pawns or if you get both very good i mean soon but my point is do not push the side pawns do not touch the fgh pawns at the start of the game i mean just a rule of thumb now that uh, you know we are at the learning stage we should follow some rule of thumb and later on you can break the principles and you can play differently but for a start try to push the central pawns either start with first move e4 or start with first move d4 and the reason is when we play e4 for example we are freeing the bishop's path mm. this it will not come out very soon the queen but it can also you know go somewhere mm -hmm. we are you know paving the way for our other pieces to come out of the chessboard okay so what are we planning to do next suppose our opponent 
does nothing plays a very horrible move a6 so he does not know the principles of the game and he just plays a move without a purpose what should we do we should control the center so this would be a nice way to play what we are doing we are controlling some important squares around the center it's very important to control the center if your opponent gives you a chance and he is not challenging the center you should try to develop your uh, pieces towards the center and take control of the center as much as possible you can take bishop this pawn ah okay good question now you are saying i can take this now can you tell me uh, what did i win by taking oh pawn wait yes, pawn is there no no yes yes pawn. so we cannot take this pawn i mean we can take it's a legal move but the point is that we won one pawn right and that has how many points three points in bishop bishop has three points and pawn has one only one point yeah so when we take this uh -huh. pawn opponent can take either yes. with the rook or, or with the knight or yeah. with the pawn yeah. yes sir. and we lose our big piece bishop which yes. has three points yes, yes, for yes. only one point right yes. so we do not take uh, opponent's pawn for our bishop that's not a good trade for us that's a bad trade for us it's like we go to a market with a 50 rupees with 50 rupee note and we come back with goods worth only you know 40 rupees we wouldn't be happy right so similarly here mm -hmm. we will not be happy with this trade so we will not take this a6 pawn and instead we will try to control the center with d4 right yes. okay now suppose opponent plays another move like a very bad move i'm trying to make uh not good moves for black just trying to show what you should try to do if your opponent gives you a free hand okay so now what you should do is you should develop your bishop. minor pieces okay. so minor which are the minor pieces do you know mom which pieces are called the minor pieces the small pieces which are the small pieces in the game of chess pawn no pawns yes but they are not called minor pieces they are the pawns among the pieces rook knight bishop and queen which will be the minor pieces knight and bishop yes the knight and bishop are smaller in value so they are the minor pieces and the rook and the queen are the you know the bigger pieces of the chess board major pieces so uh, when we are um, when we have developed the pawns after that we need to come out with the minor pieces so the best do you know what is the best square for this knight is it this or is it this Oh, central. <clears throat> so, which D square is this? D three. Is it D three? We can go slow. It's okay. Which square is it? F F three. F three. F three. Right. So, we should develop our pieces towards the center. When we play a move like knight H three, it is out of the chessboard, almost at the edge of the chessboard. Right. Yes. If you look at this knight on H three, it controls only four squares. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you develop the knight on f three, you will notice that it controls. I mean, just I'm talking about control, like you know the squares it is looking at. Mm -hmm. It's looking at eight squares. Yes. So when a knight is in the center, it's looking at lot more squares than when it is in the, in the edge of the board, right? Yes. So uh, the ideal placement for wild. For the minor pieces, is knight on c3, knight on f3. Develop the bishop somewhere. Could could be e2, d3, c4, anywhere. And very soon, white should go castling. The reason why we need to castle early. By the way, castling early is a very important uh, way to start the game. You have to castle as early as possible. There are two reasons for that. Do you have any clue? Safe, safe for it. Then. Yes, yes. The king remains safe on the edge of the board. So either g one or c one somewhere. But you can do only after the pieces are developed. You have to remove the queen, the bishop, the knight to go long castle, and you have to develop the f one bishop, and only then you can go short castle, right? Yes. So one reason mom said is that we castle uh, so that our king is safe. at the corner of the board right yes. and is another reason the rook 
comes to the center of the board after f1 it comes to e1 i'll show you with the help of an example let's go to move one let's assume black also understands that the center is important so black is developing white plays knight f3 white is attacking this pawn black plays knight c6 he says okay if you grab my pawn i grab your knight so white says i know i must castle early in the game and he develops his bishop next move white wants to castle right so uh, suppose black plays bishop c5 i mean these are not the only moves i'm just trying to show you a way to develop your pieces right and now castle the point is number one the king is safe here compared to the e1 square in the center because the center uh, is not very safe for the king so you notice that after castling the rook is ready to come to the e1 square yes and it will take part in the center so very important role of castling is not only that it brings the king to safety but it also brings the rook in the game right yes. one very important rule of the opening is do not move the same piece again and again in the opening i mean every piece try to develop it in one go for example uh let's go let's go back so say first move e4 e5 now you need to think what to do with this knight so you told me the best square for the knight is which one f3 f3 so you decide the best square for the knight is f3 and you put it there now don't try to keep moving the knight again and again unless you're winning some material with that if opponent for example opponent plays a very bad move this obviously you will move the same piece twice right which move will you play here take the queen yes yeah. you can take the queen knight. yes here you move the knight again because opponent offered a free queen so that is different but unless there is a real reason do not move the same piece again and again yes. i mean sometimes we need to move the same piece twice that's okay but in general do not move it unless there is a real reason for example in chess uh, there is a very important opening called the sicilian which starts with e4 c5 this is called the sicilian you don't need to know it now i'm just trying to show when we need to move the same piece again here white challenges the center with d4 black can take this and now we take with this knight we are moving the same piece here but there is a reason we had to capture the pawn on d4 right yes. so without a reason don't try to you know for example uh say uh, let me go to the start position say knight f3 knight c6 here don't play a move bishop e2 first and say opponent plays bishop c5 and then you realize oh the bishop is not good on e2 let me move it to c4 don't do like this in chess every tempo every move is very important do not waste moves in the game right with every move develop a piece in the opening and uh, bring it to a better square like you know you have to decide where do i put my b1 knight okay c3 could be a good square for the knight what do i do with my d pawn if i get d4 fine if i don't get d4 i put the pawn on d3 i go castling i develop my bishop when i develop my bishop i think of where to put it in one go i don't keep moving the same piece again and again very important in the opening stage of the game okay one very important thing uh in the opening uh which uh, you know a uh, uh something which beginners do quite often is they come out with their queen so for example this is a move everybody likes to make why because they think that they will very soon checkmate the opponents uh king very soon bringing some more pieces they will bring bishop on c4 they will attack the f7 point and they will give a checkmate but developing the queen early in the game is not a good idea because the queen 
will be attacked by opponent's pieces. Yes. I mean, black can first play something like this, support this. But after that, black will very soon attack this queen. Okay, if white plays uh, some normal move, but if white plays bishop c4, you have to be careful. What is white's threat now? Can you point this out, mom? What is white uh, threatening to do here? Take the pawn. Uh, with which bishop. piece? Bishop. With bishop or is there a better capture? I mean, you are saying, uh, mom is telling that with the bishop, white can capture this pawn. It's a possibility, but white has a better capture in this position. Queen. What is that? Queen can take the Queen pawn. can take the pawn and that would be? Check. Only check or is it? Checkmate. It's a checkmate. So black has to defend against this threat. So something like queen e7 or g6 could be possible. Say black can play g6 and defend against this threat. Very soon this queen keeps getting attacked again and again. For example, white says, okay, I will just be somewhere here. Now black can play d5, attack the queen with the bishop and attack this bishop with the pawn. So two pieces are attacked. The queen has to move and black can grab the bishop. So the point was do not develop the queen very early in the game because opponent's pieces can attack it and if opponent develops the queen you sh you can find ways to trouble it okay so in general what we do is in the game of chess we keep the central squares under our control and we develop our pieces towards the center we bring our king to safety very soon by castling after developing our pieces. Uh, you can decide which square you want to develop your bishop to. It will depend on opponent's moves. Uh, you can also start with first move d4 which is quite a normal move. But remember try to avoid especially touching the fg h pawns as little as possible. I mean sometimes you have to play moves like h3 later on. but try not to make these moves unless they are really necessary okay one important thing in the game of chess mom do you know there is a chess clock yes you have seen a chess clock yes okay so the game of chess is time bound which means you cannot play a game for infinite time uh, in normal tournament we have something like uh, we get two hours each or nowadays we even get one and a half hours each and uh, there's a 30 second increment after every move so for example you play e4 uh, you get 30 seconds after you play a move plus the time which you already have. So uh, let me uh, tell something about the chess clock. The chess clock is like a mm. stopwatch, mm. right? So you press, you make a move, you press your clock. That's for a normal, uh, you know, uh, tournament. This, uh, I mean, if you're playing in a computer, that's not required. But the reason I'm telling about the clock is there's a certain time in which you have to finish the game if you don't finish the game in a certain amount of time you lose the game yes. for us when we play tournaments it is like one and a half hours each and uh, when you play online in websites you can have shorter time controls mm -hmm. you can have 30 minute session or mm -hmm. a 15 minute session or whatever right advice would be mom do you have any advice to anyone what uh how had i mean you have you knew the game of chess to some extent right but right now you are kind of revising lots of stuff but what have you done after you learned the basics uh did you play with somebody sometimes at times i don't know 
Uh, so, you know the basics of chess in general, right? I mean, you had forgotten and you were relearning everything. So, after you learned chess, what did you do? Did you start playing Play. sometimes? Yes. So, now you know all the rules. You know how it is played. All you need to do is start playing. Yes. Find yourself a partner and start playing and enjoying the game. Yes. And as you play... You will learn. Your opponents will make you learn things which you did not know. If you win, very good. If you lose, you will learn from your opponents as to how to win. Right? Yes. Now, one question is, what do you do if you do not have a practice partner at home? If you do not have somebody who knows the game at home? This is a very important yes. thing. Right? Yes. So, for that, you need to... Uh, open an account in some website. There are a lot of chess websites. I will tell you about one such website and that is Lee Chess. L-I-C-H-E-S-S. -S. So log on to leechess.org and there you can play chess and you can uh, solve positions also. And the reason I'm mentioning Lee Chess is there are other websites also. There is chess.com, there is uh, chess24, there is uh, uh, play chess etc but the reason i am uh, recommending leeches is that it is a free website you don't need to buy any membership or anything just make an account in leeches.org and you can play there with lots of players from across the world for free <music>